When you're developing a new electronic product, one of the biggest early choices that you need to make is which microcontroller to use. There are hundreds of microcontroller options out there, but I find that four families stand out as the most popular among those building real products today. That includes the ESP32, STM32, Nordic NRF52, and the Raspberry Pi RP2040. Each one of these microcontroller families has their own strengths and weaknesses and ideal use cases. So in this video, I'm going to break down each one of these options for you, and then I'm going to walk you through how to decide which one of these is best for your specific product. Hi, I'm John Teal. I'm a former microchip design engineer who launched my own product, and now I help others do the same in my hardware academy. Okay, let's get started. The first thing you need to know about the ESP32 is that it's a wireless powerhouse. Almost every chip in the family includes Wi-Fi, and also a majority of them include Bluetooth. That makes it the go-to choice if your product needs to connect to Wi-Fi. And there's also the cost. The ESP32 is dirt cheap, often costing just a couple of dollars in production quantities. That's an incredible deal considering you're getting a dual-core processor, lots of RAM memory, flash storage, and integrated wireless. It's also beginner-friendly. Espressif provides solid development tools, support, and a big ecosystem of libraries and tutorials. I've created a little tool for you to help you select the best microcontroller for your specific project so you don't have to remember every detail from this video. Link to this tool is in the description below or you can access it by scanning this QR code. If you're just getting started, it's hard to beat how easy it is to bring up a Wi-Fi connected prototype using the ESP32. But of course, there are trade-offs. The ESP32 is not the lowest power option. Espressif has done a good job adding deep sleep modes, but the wireless subsystem alone burns more energy than many ultra-low power microcontrollers. That means if your product runs on a coin cell or needs to last years on a small battery, the ESP32 may not be the best choice. Another drawback is certification. If you use the ESP32 as a bare chip and enable its wireless functions, then you'll need to go through full FCC or CE testing which is expensive and very time consuming. Using a pre-certified ESP32 module avoids most of that hassle and is usually the smarter choice unless you have a really large budget. Security is another consideration. The ESP32 includes standard features like secure boot and flash encryption, but it hasn't built the same reputation for hardened security as some other platforms. For most consumer products, it's fine. But if you're building something where security is critical, it's definitely something worth uh, considering. If your product needs Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and you're looking for a low-cost, easy-to-use solution, the ESP32 is often the best place to start. Just keep in mind the power consumption, certification requirements, and security considerations. Now, originally, there was only a single ESP32 with different memory options, but in recent years, Espressif has expanded the line significantly. Next up is the STM32 family from ST Microelectronics. This family is massive. It has dozens of different series, hundreds of part numbers, and a range that covers everything from ultra-low power chips all the way up to high-performance cores with DSP and graphics acceleration. If I had to describe the STM32 family in one word, it would be versatile. There's an STM32 for almost any need. Want something ultra low power? Well, the STM32L series has you covered. Need raw horsepower for signal processing or running a little real-time operating system? Look at the STM32H series. Another advantage of the STM32 series is stability. The STM32 line has been around for years. It's widely used in industry and it's not going anywhere. That means you can design a product today and still expect support years down the road. Tooling is strong too. There's the STM32 Cube IDE, Cube MX, and the HAL libraries make development smoother. It's not as simple as Arduino, but once you get familiar with it, it's a professional grade development environment. Where the STM32 really shines is in products that don't need wireless built in or where you want fine control over performance versus power. 
you can pick exactly the series and package that match your needs. The downsides, wireless is mostly missing. Now there are a few STM32 parts with wireless radios, but it's not really the family's strong point. You'll usually need to pair an STM32 with a separate wireless module if your product requires wireless functionality. And second, the sheer number of options can be quite overwhelming. New developers often get lost in the alphabet soup of F1, F4, G0, L4, H7, and choosing the right one requires some careful thought. To sum it up, STM32 is the safe, versatile choice for general embedded products. If your product doesn't need wireless or you need more flexibility in power and performance, well, then STM32 is usually going to be a great fit. Now let's talk about the NRF52 family from Nordic Semiconductor. These aren't nearly as well known as the ESP32 and STM32, but for many products, they're my favorite solution. These chips are all about Bluetooth and low power. If your product is something like a fitness tracker, or a sensor device, or a wearable that needs to last months or years on a small battery, well, the NRF52 is one of the best options available. Nordic has put a huge amount of effort into optimizing Bluetooth performance while minimizing current consumption. Their software development kit is focused on wireless use cases, and they provide good libraries and examples for Bluetooth low energy. Another strength is community adoption. A lot of consumer devices out there are built using on the NRF52 family, so you'll find plenty of reference designs and proven approaches to copy from. But the NRF52 is not designed to be a general purpose microcontroller. If you just need a fast processor and a lot of peripherals, well then usually you're better off with an STM32. The NRF52 is built specifically around Bluetooth. Yes, you can do other things with it, but the strength of the family is ultra low power wireless. Pricing is reasonable, but not as cheap as the ESP32, and you'll pay a bit of a premium for the low power and solid Bluetooth stack. So if your product needs long battery life, compact design, and Bluetooth as the main wireless link, well, then the NRF52 is probably the best choice. Finally, we have the RP2040 from Raspberry Pi. This is one of the newest of the bunch, and it's quickly gained a huge following. Now, just don't confuse this microcontroller chip with their original microprocessor-based Raspberry Pi. The headline feature of the RP2040 microcontroller is cost. It's one of the cheapest 32-bit microcontrollers you can buy. Raspberry Pi has been very aggressive in pricing, and you can get these chips for under a dollar in volume. Performance is really solid too. It includes a dual-core Cortex-M0+, Plus running at up to 133 megahertz. It supports common interfaces like USB and SPI, so it works well for general embedded applications. One thing to keep in mind is memory, though. The RP2040 includes 264 kilobytes of SRAM, but it includes no internal flash memory. So every design requires an external flash chip for program storage. Now that's going to add a bit of cost and complexity compared to microcontrollers that usually come with built-in flash. Though overall, the RP2040 is still one of the most affordable microcontrollers that you can buy. The development experience is friendly, too, and because it's backed by Raspberry Pi, there's a huge hobbyist and maker community around it. There are limitations. For example, it has no wireless functionality, so if you need Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, you'll need an external module. And while the RP2040 is cheap, it doesn't have as wide a range of variants or power-optimized options as the STM32 or NRF52. So the RP2040 shines in products that need a lot of computing power at rock bottom cost, but don't require integrated wireless or extremely low power. Don't forget, I've created a free microcontroller selection tool for you, so you don't have to remember everything I've said in this video. You can access this free tool using the link in the description or scan this QR code. Okay, now the big question. How do you actually choose between these four microcontrollers? Well, here's how I suggest you decide. Step one, does your product need wireless? If you need Wi-Fi, well, the ESP32 is almost always the right choice. It's affordable, it's proven, and it saves you from bolting on an external module. If you need Bluetooth with ultra-low power, well, then the NRF52 is usually going to be the winner. Step 2. 
How important is battery life? If your product needs to sip power for months or years, well then lean toward the NRF52 or certain STM32L series microcontrollers. The ESC32 can work, but it won't match the power efficiency of those ultra low power families. Step three, what's your budget? If cost is your main driver and you don't need wireless, well, the Raspberry Pi RP2040 is going to be hard to beat. If you do need wireless, the ESP32 still gives you the best price to feature ratio. Step four, do you need scalability and long-term options? If you want a huge range of part choices with different sizes, speeds, and power levels, well, the STM32 is going to be the way to go. The breadth of the family means you can scale up or down in future versions of your product without changing architectures. Step five, what's your development experience? For beginners, I'd say the ESP32 and the RP2040 are the easiest to get started with. STM32 and NRF52 are more professional grade with steeper learning curves, but also stronger long-term ecosystems. And if you need personalized help selecting the best microcontroller for your project, then we can help you inside the Hardware Academy. So hopefully this video has helped you select which family is going to be the best fit for your product. And if you're going with the ESP32, there are still lots of different options that you can choose from. So check out this video here where I go through the different ESP32 options and how to choose the best one for your product. And if you're looking at the STM32, which has a massive family of parts, then see this video here where I show you how to select the best STM32 for your project.